Welcome to Tide TV this week, brought to you by Renaissance Bank. I'm Christopher England, alongside Maggie Hetzel. Due to the threat of the coronavirus, on Thursday, the Southeastern Conference canceled the remainder of the 2020 Men's Basketball SEC Tournament and suspended all competition until March 30th. On Thursday, the SEC released this statement regarding the suspension of play. Based on the latest developments in the continued spread of the coronavirus, COVID-19, the Southeastern Conference today announced the suspension of regular season competition for teams in all sports on SEC camp campuses, as well as SEC championship events until March 30th. And at the time of our taping, no SEC sporting events will take place through at least March 30th. For more information on the Crimson Tide, visit RollTide.com. And Maggie, this past Saturday may have been the last time this season that fans were able to see the Alabama gymnastics team in person as Alabama closed out the home portion of their schedule this past Saturday night with the Tide hosting 10th ranked Georgia. It was senior night on Saturday as the Crimson Tide celebrated its three seniors, Winner Childers, Maddie Dash, and Shea Mahoney. All three have been named Scholastic All-Americans during their career, and Dash and Mahoney have earned all SEC honors. The Crimson Tide opened with a 49-325 on vault and 9-9s from Shallon Olsen and Lexi Graber, while Maddie Dash posted a 9-8-7-5. Mahoney scored a 9-9 to even the uneven bars to win the uneven bars, leading the Tide to a 49-225 team score on the event. While Childers led off the rotation with a season high, tying a 9-8-5 and 9-9 from Luisa Blanco and a 9-8-7-5 from Alonzo. The Klopfer pushed the Tide to a 49-3 on balance beam. The Crimson Tide closed its floor exercise lineup with four 9-9-2-5s and a 9-9 to tally a 49-6. Lexi Graber won the all-around with a score of 39-4-5. That totaled up the, to push Alabama to another a third 197-plus score in a row in the fifth of the season as the eighth-ranked Crimson Tide defeated 10th-ranked Georgia 197-4-5 to 196-05. Senior night, you know, I always say that senior night can go in a lot of different ways because they can overtry. And I thought these ladies literally trusted their training and were beautiful on every single thing that they did. We had to fight for a lot of little things here and there. We gave away definitely some landings that can benefit us in the future. But overall, you know, the way they finished on floor was just beautiful. I thought that uh, there were a lot of great little lessons here and there on every event. And we really closed out a great home season. Thank you to our audience and our fans because they make it a difference maker. And with the 197.45, the Crimson Tide, they are still ranked eighth in this week's Reeks rankings. The regular season is winding down for Alabama gymnastics, while the Alabama men's basketball team just wrapped up their regular season. The Crimson Tide took on the Missouri Tigers in Columbia last Saturday for their final regular season contest of the season. Going into that matchup, Alabama led the all-time series 11-3. Three, but Maggie, it was very much a contrast of styles as Alabama entered the matchup leading the SEC and was second in the nation in scoring, averaging 83.1 points per game, while Mizzou had the second best scoring defense in the SEC, allowing just 65.7 points per game. Alabama jumped out to a 5-2 lead on this Jaden Shackelford three-pointer just over two minutes into the game, but the Crimson Tide would score just 15 more points over the final 18 minutes of the first half. Missouri didn't fare much better. The Tigers led at the half 21-20. Alabama retook the lead at the 17-03 mark of the second half on this Kyra Lewis jumper, or layup, excuse me, that made it 26-25 to for the Crimson Tide. Bama then took their biggest lead of the second half at 37-34, but the Tigers answered with a 12-run run that turned it into an eight-point Missouri lead, 46-38. From there on, the Crimson Tide never got any closer than five as Missouri ran away from the Tide with a 67-50 win. It's a pretty embarrassing effort on defense to close the game out with, so I thought up until that point, we actually played hard. Now, we struggled on offense, so going into the game, we had said, you know, no matter what happens, let's just make sure we give an effort the whole game, you know, whether we turn it over, can't make shots, whatever, let's get it. I thought we did that up until that point, and then the dam kind of broke, and we, we, we folded a little bit, and you got to give Missouri credit. They, they never broke. I mean, you know, we made a little bit of a run there in the second half, took the lead. They didn't break. They kept playing hard. Missouri's bench was the spark for the Tigers. Mizzou's bench outscored Alabama's 40-5. to with 30 of those coming in the second half, Kyra Lewis Jr. led the Crimson Tide with 18 points, four assists, and a pair of steals. Jaden Shackford added 13 and five rebounds, while Galen Smith recorded his second double-digit scoring game of the season with 10 points and four rebounds. 
the Southeastern Conference released their awards this week, and four of the Crimson Tide players earned all SEC honors. Kyra Lewis Jr., who earned SEC All Freshman honors a year ago, was named to the All SEC First Team, while John Petty Jr. was named to the All SEC Second Team. In addition to the All Conference accolades, the head coaches from around the league also voted guard Jalen Jaden Jalen Shackelford to the league's All Freshman Team. With Herbert Jones was tabbed as an All Defensive Team performer. This past week, the Alabama women's basketball team took part in the SEC tournament in Greenville, South Carolina. The Alabama was on the bubble for the NCAA women's tournament. The number eight seed took the Crimson Tide and on a ninth seed, Georgia, in the second round this past Thursday. Georgia jumped out to a six-point lead at 13-7 with just over four minutes to play in the opening period. But from there, the Crimson Tide closed out the first 10 minutes of action with a nine-run run led by five points from Jasmine Walker and four from Sierra Johnson to take the 16-14 lead after one. Alabama remained in control with the 26-21 edge with just over five minutes to go before the half. However, the Lady Bulldogs responded by outscoring the Tide 12-4 to take a 33-30 lead. A 35-foot shot to tie it at the buzzer by Walker was way waved off right there. Just as getting the shot off a tenth of a second too late, the Tigers took a three-point lead into the locker room, 33-30 to 30 at the half. Georgia controlled the game in the second half and quickly expanded their lead to double digits at 43-32 with 5.09 left in the third quarter. Alabama trimmed the lead to five, but Georgia hit a jumper in the final seconds to go up 53-46, headed into the final 10 minutes of play. Alabama cut the deficit to just four at 65-61 with 117 remaining, but it was too little too late as Georgia hung on for the win, 68-61. To win seven out of ten, um, eight wins in this league should get you in the NCAA tournament. And um, a one one day game shouldn't take away from our body of work. So I'm just really proud of my kids. Tied with 15 points and four assists, while Brittany Davis added 14 on six of seven shooting off the bench. Jasmine Walker had 11 points, and Uriah Copeland chipped in 10. The Alabama baseball team is off to their best start under head coach Brad Bohannon. Could the Tide keep it going this past weekend in their final non-conference series of the season? We'll have the highlights coming up next. Tide TV this week is brought to you by ATI. Built by Bama. Rebuilt by ATI Physical Therapy. Ford and the F-150. Tough runs in our family. See your local Ford dealer today. AFS, a Bayless company. Your foundation and waterproofing specialists, serving you since 2000. Welcome back. The Alabama baseball team is off to a hot start this season. Going into last weekend's series, Alabama was off their best off to their best start since 1997. Alabama welcomed Lipscomb to Sewell Thomas Stadium for their final non-conference series before ACC play begins. Our Ariel Schaefer joins us now for a recap of this past weekend's action at the Joe. Perfect start for the Alabama baseball team going 13-0, the best start under head coach Brad Bohannon. The Tide looked to keep that going this past weekend against Lipscomb. Game one of the three-game series against Lipscomb was a thriller. Alabama was first on the board Friday, playing up one run in the third with an RBI single down the left side from Sam Prater. The Tide's lead held steady until an error from the Tide in the top of the seventh led to a fielder's choice and brought a man home from third, putting the Bisons on the board to tie the game 1-1. One both teams remained scoreless until the bottom of the 13th when a wild pitch with all the bases loaded allowed the tie to score and walk it off for a 2-1 victory. It took 13 innings to get to 14-0 for the Crimson Tide. The tie suffered its first loss of the season, falling to the Bisons 3-2 on Saturday. Lipscomb struck first with a hit in the first inning to give the Bisons the 1-0 lead. Bama got back on the board in the home half of the third to tie the game back up. However, two RBI singles from the Bisons in the top of the fourth and fifth innings put Lipscomb back on top 3-1. to one. The Crimson Tide got runners aboard in the seventh and eighth innings but was unable to complete the comeback and fell to the Bisons 3-2. to two. I hope it's a little bit motivated and look like taking some of the frustrations from this game and, you know, Turn to get into positive energy and uh, ener just overall energy tomorrow and try to win the series. The Tide finished up the series with a huge statement on Sunday, defeating the Bisons 14-2. Alabama's offense put up three in the second inning, followed by an eight-run fourth inning, putting the game out of reach early to ensure the win. For the day, Brett Auerbach led the offense, going three for five with two doubles, two runs, and a career high of four RBIs. 
In the circle, Antoine Jean picked up his third win of the season with a one-run effort, tallying four hits while striking out six across in five innings of work. Obviously a really, really good day for us. Very proud of the way our guys responded to, to a tough game yesterday. Um, you know, Lipscomb certainly helped us some today, and to our guys' credit, they did a great job of taking advantage of their mistakes and, um, you know, just really glad to, to win the series against a good team. After the series win over Lipscomb, the Tide improved to 15-1. Thank you, Ariel. On Tuesday evening, Alabama defeated UAB 13-7 in their final non-conference matchup before they begin SEC play this weekend. The ninth-ranked Alabama softball team, they were back in action here at home this past weekend as well. Could the Tide open SEC play with a series win? We'll have the highlights coming up next. This week is brought to you by ATI, built by Bama, rebuilt by ATI Physical Therapy, the University of Alabama, where legends are made. Welcome back to Tide TV This Week, brought to you by Renaissance Bank. The ninth-ranked Alabama softball team has played a very competitive schedule so far this season, and it doesn't get any easier from here on out as the Tide began SEC play this past weekend. Patrick Murphy's squad hosted 20th-ranked 20, Arkansas for a three-game series to open SEC play this past weekend at Rhodes Stadium. Our Trey Yannity has a complete recap of the series. SEC play is officially upon us. Number 13 Alabama softball welcomed in the number 20 Arkansas Razorbacks this weekend for the first time in Rhodes Stadium since 2017. During game one of the three game set Friday night, neither team was going to budge as Ace Montana Fouts dueled it out with Arkansas's Autumn Storms. That went out to center. Johnson with a diving catch. Through the first six innings, neither pitcher allowed a run, but the scoreless streak would come to a halt when Danielle Gibson singled through the right side in the top of the seventh to give the Razorbacks the go-ahead run and the 1-0 victory. But the sun rose again Saturday morning, and Alabama rose with it. Squashing an early 2-0 deficit, the Crimson Tide took a 5-2 lead into the sixth inning where Jenna Johnson and KB Sides led the offense to a five spot, declaring their 10th victory by Mercy Rule this season with a 10-2 final score. That one out to left. McEwen's got it, it's headed back, and it's gone! I thought we just put a lot of pressure on all their pitchers. Uh, just a really, really good win for us against a good team. In the series finale on Sunday, Alabama jumped out to an early 4-1 lead and never looked back, riding out another quality start from freshman pitcher Lexi Killifoy to a 9-1 Mercy Rule win for the second day in a row. Heist does it again, and Alabama walks off the Razorbacks to take the series. Skyler Wallace would finish the series with four runs scored and a perfect three for three day at the plate on Sunday. We were going today. We were all hyped up. I mean, dancing in the dugout, you know, playing. I mean, me and Savannah out there playing like it's lava when they're breaking the infield. I mean, it's just a lot of fun and just to chill out and not add the pressure that's needed for the game and just play the game that we know how to play. Reporting from Road Stadium, I'm Trey Entity, Tide TV. Thank you, Trey. A big finish to the series for the Tide against the Arkansas Razorbacks with two big run rule victories, and a big part of the series' win was because of the play of junior KB Sides. She was named SEC Co-Player of the Week. Sides led the team with seven hits and a 778 batting average on the weekend. The SEC Co-Player of the Week award is her first for Sides in, a career, in her career. Stay with us. We'll have more Tide TV this week coming up next. Welcome back to Tide TV This Week, brought to you by Renaissance Bank. The Alabama men's tennis team was at home this past weekend as the Tide hosted a couple of SEC matches. The 17th-ranked Tide dropped a close matchup to 49th-ranked Kentucky 4-3 in their first match of the weekend. Alabama bounced back on Sunday, though, against number 45 Vanderbilt. The 17th-ranked Tide defeated the Commodores 4-3 for their 11th win of the year. Very good response from, I guess, a rather disappointing Friday night, and the guys responded very well. And you know, every match that we play is going to be like this. It's a difference of just, uh, you know, a, a handful of points. And uh, what it comes down to is who's going to be able to execute their game plan, who's going to compete from beginning to end. And they did a really good job of, of that today. Um, and it was a tough, tough opponent. The Alabama women's tennis team was in action this past weekend as well, and just like the men, the women took on Kentucky and Vanderbilt. In Lexington on Friday, the Tide won the doubles match for a 1-0 lead, but the Wildcats were too tough in the singles play as 34th-ranked Kentucky 
defeated Alabama 4-2 in Nashville on Sunday against Vanderbilt. It was a back and forth matchup. Alabama won the doubles match for the second time on the weekend, but was unable to win the match in singles play as number 17 Vanderbilt defeated Alabama in a close one 4-3. Now the Alabama men's and women's golf teams were in action as well. The men competed at the Cabo Collegiate in Mexico. The men finished tied for seventh with freshman Cannon Clay Claycomb earning his first top ten finish. For his performance, he was named the SEC Men's Freshman Golfer of the Week. And the Alabama women's golf team finished 13th at the Darius Rucker Intercollegiate. Senior Kenzie Wright finished sixth in the individual standings, her third top ten finish of the spring. Stay with us. We'll have our plays and players of the week. That's coming up next right here on Tide TV. Mack hammers it. And that one gets over Malkin's glove. That'll clear the bases. Mack heads for third and stops there. How about a bases clearing three RBI triple? This one roped to right field, way back there, and it is gone. Fifth home run of the year for Owen Diodotti, the freshman with tremendous power. Through the front, through to a double back. Tight position, very difficult. Spot with landing. What a powerful performance, well done. Those are our BBBA Top Plays of the Week. Now let's take a look at our Players of the Week, brought to you by Payless Drugs. Lexi Graber won the all-around with a score of 39-4-5 in, in number 8 Alabama's win over 10th-ranked Georgia. Graber tied her top score of the night on vault with a 9-9 and also tied for the team high on floor with a 9-9-2-5. That 9-9-2-5 score on floor tied her season high. She also finished the night with 9-8s on bars and beam. And KB Size led 9th-ranked Alabama at the plate this past weekend in their series win over 20th-ranked Arkansas. Sides led the team with seven hits and a 778 batting average. She also had three multi-hit performances, including a career-best three hits in the series opener and scored a season-best three runs in Game 2 against the Razorbacks. She is now tied for the team lead with eight multi-hit games this season. For her performance in the series win, Sides was named the SEC Softball Co-Player of the Week. See you next week, everybody. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.